Today's video is going to be about whether someone should buy a cheap piano or an expensive keyboard. And this uh, video is kind of inspired by a comment that someone left on my YouTube channel a couple of nights ago in which they asked um, whether I would choose between two uh, inexpensive piano brands that I would consider to be in the bottom one third of the piano industry. And so I thought about it for a while and I actually kind of came up with a different answer because these, both of these two brands of pianos are probably pretty similar and both of them would run you about seventeen to twenty thousand dollars. And what I was thinking was that if I had to have a keyboard instrument and that I, it had to be new and that I wasn't looking for a pretty piece of furniture with all the pretty strings and something to look really cool inside of my house, I wanted an instrument that I could practice on and play on, I would honestly go for a high-end keyboard such as a Korg SV1, the 88 key edition, or perhaps the, um, the Kawai MP11. And what is the reason for this, you might be wondering? Well, first of all, there is a massive price difference between these. A high-end keyboard is going to cost you, such as the two that I've mentioned, is going to cost you maybe three or four thousand when you include an amp with that. And whereas, as I said earlier, a low-end piano is going to cost you, you know, seventeen to twenty thousand dollars, maybe a little bit less. So there is a large price difference there. And if you're looking to get a quality keyboard instrument on a budget, I would recommend an electric keyboard. I have an interesting story to tell you about a um, a low-end, I believe, Chinese or Indonesian piano that I found in a piano store the other day. And I'm looking at it, and it looks quite interesting. It has the it has silver hardware, silver hinges and pedals and all that on it, and it has a gray harp very similar to the Sterling Edition pianos that Steinway makes. I don't know if they're trying to do a knockoff or just they're inspired by it, but it looked very much like that. However, it obviously was not a Steinway. And so I go over and I sit down and I play it, and I'm actually kind of impressed with the sound. It didn't sound anywhere near as bad as I thought. Sometimes these uh, cheap Chinese pianos, especially older ones, can be laughably bad. This one honestly was pretty nice. And I, I'm playing a slow, uh, soft song on it, and I'm very impressed with how it's playing. Then I decided to switch things up and play the Pirates of the Caribbean theme, which I've done in a few of my other videos. And as you, if you've seen those, you'll know that I'm pretty good at playing it. However, I physically could not play that song on that piano. I'm trying to do all the chord jumps and all that stuff, and I'm missing all these notes, and it's just really hard for me to play. And I was on a trip. I was away from home when I was worried, like, am I forgetting how to play the song? And I was just about, the, in a few hours, I was going to go play on a really high-end piano. And I was like, what if I can't do the video for that? What if I can't play the song on it? And, but I'm playing it, the, the Chinese piano, and I'm realizing that the action is really, really heavy when I go to play these fast passages. And the piano was virtually unplayable for that song. And as I just said, I've played that song for several months now, at least, possibly even up to a year. And I'm okay at playing it, uh, to put it mildly. But what if I was just trying to learn that piece? What if I had bought that piano and I was trying to learn the piece? And if I can't play it when I know how to play the song, how would I be able to learn the piece if I don't know how to play it? That piano would make it very difficult for me to learn an advanced piece like that. And I would just end up getting frustrated. I'd end up thinking that I was a terrible pianist, that I'd have no hope in being a pianist, and I'd just put that, uh, that idea out of my mind and not play the piano anymore. So that is a pretty bad experience that I had with that piano. And so while it looks nice and it would look cool in someone's living room as an actual playable instrument, I would discount it heavily. However, when it comes to keyboards, especially modern ones such as the two that I mentioned, the Korg SV1, which I own, and the Kawai MP11, which I have played on and admire greatly, that is a much different story. Both of these keyboards have an action that is very similar to that of a concert grand, particularly the MP11. And uh, w when I went to the NAMM show of 2016, I actually warmed up on a Kawhi MP11 before going out and playing uh, much higher end concert grands because I really wanted to play those very well. So I warmed up, put the headphones on, practiced my song several times on the MP11, and really got myself into the mindset of I'm playing a concert grand before going out and actually playing the concert grand. And I think I played much better for being warmed up on the MP11. I personally own a Korg SV-1, and I love it for all of its really cool, like, 70s synth and electric piano sounds. Think of, like, Stevie Wonder Superstition. It does that kind of sounds, and they sound awesome. And so if you're looking for that type of thing, and you're looking to do really cool sounds with a keyboard, I really recommend the SV-1. Uh, it's about 
it's about a little over a thousand dollars and uh, it's a really really high quality instrument and uh, it has all kinds of cool sounds that are really gritty and analog sounding and they're awesome and if you really want to do cool stuff with it pair it with a looper I use a, uh, a Boss RC 500 looper and uh, it is a really great pairing because I can lay down a chord progression and do solos over it with all these funky sounds and it sounds awesome. However, if you're looking for a keyboard that gives you a much more true piano experience, I would recommend the MP11 as its piano sounds are honestly much better than those of the SV1. The SV1 does do acoustic piano sounds, but to me they don't really sound as good as the ones on the MP11. On the MP11 you also have lots of nice controls that some you don't have on the SV1. On the SV1. You have like a brilliant knob that you can make the piano sound really mellow or really, really bright. You have a nice reverb knob which the, MP, uh, the SV1 does have, but it's not that great. And so the MP11 does do some things that the SV1 does not do as well. But the EP sounds on the MP11 aren't that great. They're okay, but they're not amazing like they are in the SV1. So if you're looking to do cool, jazzy sounds, go with the SV1. If you're looking to play classical music and practice things like that, go with the MP11. So hopefully you found this video uh, informative, hopefully it helped you in some way, and I just wanted to put my opinion out there and make a more detailed video uh, about this topic as I couldn't really explain it to its fullest extent in a uh, YouTube comment without writing a complete 20 page novel about the, uh, the topic. So hopefully you found the video informative. If you did, uh, you can leave a like, actually let, uh, leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought and uh, what your experiences have been with uh, lower end uh, Asian pianos. And uh, so hopefully you found it interesting and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you for watching.